All right, let's take a look at some tangent plane approximations for a function of several variables. Um, we're given the implicit equation x, y plus y, z plus z, x equals 11. And we're interested in finding the equation of the tangent plane at the point 1, 2, 3, and then using that to approximate the value of the function uh, at the point 1.01, 2 0.02. So you might have to solve your equation for z as a function of x and y. Um, that's the case here. And so we'd want to factor the terms that have z. So you get z times y plus x. Then you'd want to subtract x, y. Both sides. And then finally, you'd want to divide both sides by y plus x and get z as a function of x. And we want to get some partial derivatives with respect to x and y. So let's start with the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Uh, we got x in the numerator and denominator, so we're going to use the product rule. Derivative of the top with respect to x is negative y times the denominator x plus y minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respect to x, which is just 1. And that's all over the denominator squared. Let's distribute. So I've got negative xy, negative y squared. That 1 can just go away negative 11 and positive xy. So the xy and negative xy do add to zero. And we end up with negative one. y squared minus 11 over x plus y squared. All right, let's do the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Again, quotient rule, because y is in the top and bottom. Thinking of y as the variable of differentiation now, and x is a constant, the uh, derivative of the top respect to y is negative x times the bottom, which is x plus y minus the top times the derivative of the bottom with respect to y is still one. Denominator is the same. And let's go in and distribute. So we got negative x squared, negative xy, negative 11, and positive xy. We get the xy's adding to 0 again. Uh, and what's left is negative x squared minus 11 over x plus y squared. All right. So in step three, we want to evaluate the function and the partial derivatives from step two at the point uh, where we want to create the tangent plane. So that would be this point here. Now, we already know that the z value is three, but there's some problems where they won't give that to you. They'll just say, you know, x is one, y is two, um, and you have to find that. So we'll just show that. We can find that value even if it's not given. 
using the function. So we had to use our function from step one, which again, sometimes that's given. And replace x with one and y with two. I mean, this is kind of a nice little validation for step one. So that's 11 minus two over three, which is nine over three, which is three. Uh, which matches the z value we're given. So that's good. I need a little more room here. All right, now we're going to evaluate the partial derivatives from step two at that same point. So let's do the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Evaluate at the point one, two. Um, so we're replacing y with two. Negative two squared minus 11, one plus two squared. It's negative four minus 11 over three squared, negative 15 over 27, it's negative five thirds. Oh, that's not a 27. I was cubing. Uh, three squared is nine. So I was looking at reducing that. When you reduce, you're just dividing by three. So negative 15 over nine, which is negative five. All right, let's do uh, the same thing with the partial derivative of y with respect, partial derivative of f with respect to y, evaluating that at one, two. So x is one. Denominator is the same. Maybe I'll get it right. Uh, negative 12 over 9. That's negative 4 thirds. All right. So we're actually ready to set up the equation of the tangent plane. Sometimes that's all you need to do. And um, you would start with the z value. So z equals the starting z value, which was 3. And then the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So I guess we want minus here. And then in parentheses, x minus the x value, which is one, um, plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So that's the 4 thirds. And then y minus the y value. There's the equation of our tangent plane. Um, for approximating with this, we're going to do some additional steps that may come up in certain problems. Um, and we will look at that now. So in step five, we find the total differential for z. Uh, and you can see that it uses the partial derivatives evaluated at the point that we found in step three, the negative 5 thirds and negative 4 thirds, um, and then multiplies those by some uh, changes in x and y. Um, so you may be wondering, what are dx and what are dy? Those could be given, those could be determined by you. Um, actually can figure those out from the way the question is posed, right? So dx is the change in x there. Uh, and so going from one to 1.01 is just the 0 0.01. So that's the dx. Similarly, the dy is 0 0.02. Um, sometimes you get to pick those, sometimes those are given explicitly, sometimes you have to subtract and get those like we did. Um, and that will also be the same for delta x, 
right? Those don't end up changing delta y. Um, but the uh, d's are for approximations. So when we look at dz, right, that's the approximation. And then the delta z is the actual change or the exact value. Of course, we'll compare these. So the dz is using the tangent plane, and the delta z will use the function itself. All right, so we know that dx is 0 0.01, dy is 0 0.02, and we could just set up this formula. So dz is that partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated x naught y naught. That was our negative 5 thirds. So that's the, from the tangent plane, that's the slope in the x direction on this surface. And then we use that, just like with Euler's method, we kind of step forward in the x direction and see what the change in z is. Um, and then we do that in the y direction, where we had negative 4 thirds. And this will give us the change in z according to y. So uh, then just push all that into a calculator. That should give you negative 13 over 200. And then you're able to find the linear approximation, approximation which we use L, S, Y. And z naught is three, it's our starting z value, uh, plus this dz, which is minus 13 over 200, uh, which gives us 887 over 300. At that point, we might want to round it. Though that looks like we have an exact value. I don't know why I use the approximation. I think that's an exact value there with the overbar. All right, so this should be close to the exact value of the function um, at the new point, right? Remember, we started at one, two, three, and we're moving to 1.01, 2.02, and then we're about to find the exact z value. But uh, kind of what we did with the approximation um, is we found. An approximate z value. And we'll kind of compare those. So using the tangent plane, the z value is 2.956 repeating, or 2.956 repeating. And then uh, let's find the exact value. So for that, we just go back to the original function. Um, and you can use, I think I used the function from step one. But honestly, that was a little sloppy because what if I made a mistake in step one? So I think instead, I'm actually going to go back and use the original equation that we were given um, just so I can try to catch any possible mistake there. So need another space. So the original equation was x, y plus y, z. Cx. And then we're going to put in uh, the x and y values. And then we're going to solve for z. So well, I guess we'd multiply. 1.01 times 2.02. And then combine those and we'd get 3.03. Um, subtracting the 2.0402 from both sides. And 
And then finally, dividing by 3.03. So we won't expect this to exactly match up. Um, and again, our accuracy will be roughly on the order of magnitude of the step sizes. Of course, there's two step sizes of both directions. So it ends up being a little different. This looks like it repeats nine five seven zero two nine. And then you can compare, right? These are pretty accurate. So if you didn't have two decimal places of accuracy, you might be looking for a mistake. This is a bit of a kind of a validation of the tangent plane itself. Um, We've got two decimal places of accuracy, and you can see we kind of get broken apart at that third decimal point, decimal place, um, where it's six and seven. Um, and so that's pretty much what you'd expect using, uh, you know, these being two decimal places. Okay. Still uh, pretty good, pretty good approximation. All right, so... You'll have some problems where you're doing stuff with the total differential and the tangent plane approximation. That should help you with that. Um, I still think it's nice to do kind of a geometric slash technological val validation. Um, and, and this gives us a chance to look at some of the stuff we'll see in the lab um, and with Python. So going over to lab four, um, run that boilerplate code at the top if you don't already have it. And then uh, I skipped over this one in the last methodology, but hopefully it's pretty straightforward, just taking derivatives. Uh, the example here in tangent planes is actually the one we're working on. So you need two variables. You don't need to change that. Um, but here's where you define your function of two variables. So you can see we have 11 minus xy over x plus y. Um, and then this first uh, part here that just finds the partial derivatives for us, which is nice. Um, we can compare that with step two. So you do step one by hand. Um, uh, you could code in step one if you wanted, but I have us doing step one by hand, putting the result here, and then Python validates step two. You can see these look a little different because they did expand that denominator. And then we do a graphical validation so create your domain here. Um, I just have us looking at um, a square that avoids, um, or sorry, a, a, a square that's kind of near the point 1.01, 2.02. Um, it's not actually as centered on it as I thought. Uh, but this x is going from 0 0.5 to 5, y is going from 0 0.5 to 5. You want to make sure that the point in question, which is x is 1, y is 2, um, is included there. So you may need to change your the first two numbers there to get a better domain that includes your point. Um, you're redoing the function here using capital X and Y. Uh, we use a z1 for the function, a z2 for the tangent plane. So there's our equation of our tangent plane from step four, again, using capital X, capital Y. If you need to use special functions, use NumPy prefix and P here. Uh, and then we do a 3D graph of this. Um, and we have two surface plots, one for Z1 and one for Z2. Right, and so you see the curved surface is on top here. Um, that's the function of two variables. And then you have the flat tangent plane on the bottom. Um, and what you're looking for is that they are kind of touching at that one spot, which I believe we can see. Remember, we're looking at uh, when X is one and when Y is two. And so that's actually right here. So going up, I mean, I think the perspective makes it a little harder because um, I feel like they are actually touching like right here. 
So anyway, that's where the tangent plane touches that. And then of course the curve, curved surface separates as you move away from there. That's what you're looking for uh, is the flat sheet matching up with the curved sheet at that one point, And then the curved surface will usually peel away as you get further apart. All right, uh, that will do it for tangent planes. We'll see you in the next video where we look at chain rule for functions of several variables.